everyone. Can you believe we've reached the last week of March already? Thank you so much for staying engaged with The Upper Room. As I've said from the beginning, you will get out of this program what you put into this program. And so I want to encourage you, fight to keep your Upper Room commitment. Don't let a million other things steal your time so you don't have any more energy to devote to growing as a disciple of Jesus. This month's theme has been called Fishing 101. I think it's been great to give our attention to one of the most neglected aspects of the Christian life, actually sharing our faith. How is it that the mission that Jesus gives us in Matthew 28 to go and make disciples of all nations is one of the most neglected aspects of our faith life. The reasons for this are many, but perhaps one of the biggest reasons that we fall short is because we haven't been trained and we haven't been discipled in this. This month, that we at least began to grow in this area. I'm very thankful for what Pastor Kyle shared with us last week. Be sure to print out that document that came with his teaching. I don't think we need to read a textbook on this, but we do need to do a little bit of study. What he gave us there was a great resource. So we've been praying. We have been looking intently at our 9 to 15 people that we spend most of our time with. We call that group of people our oikos. Today, your number is getting called. I loved playing basketball as a teenager, and there's nothing greater Nothing more exciting and maybe nothing more terrifying than having your coach look down at you on the bench and say, Larson, get in there for so-and-so. To have your number called, to get to participate in our team's pursuit of victory, and to not just cheer for everyone else from the bench. What a privilege. This week, we're sending you out. The harvest is plentiful but the workers are few. It's time to get to work. As you have prayed, has the Lord put a burden on your heart for anyone in your oikos? That's probably where you should start. Maybe God has put a burden for, on your heart for someone who's outside your oikos. Someone that you think, man, I really need to be intentional to try to bring them in. The challenge this week is simple. Make a move. Do something. Take a baby step of faith. God uses small things. We've been talking about this in big church. Take a baby step of faith at the very least. Some of you might be ready to take a great big step of faith. The goal is to engage someone that you care about with the goal of eventually helping that person come into a saving faith in Jesus. I want to give you several ideas to kind of get your creative ideas going. Maybe it'll spark an idea for how you might want to move forward this week with your big step of faith. Number one, I'm going to start with some simple ones. Ask someone this very simple question. How are you doing? How are you doing? That's it. Not just the customary, how you doing, man? And you keep moving. But when you've got a moment to spend with someone, say, how are you really doing, friend? How are you holding up? What's going on in your life? If they're going through something very challenging, listen patiently. Your number one job is to listen. And then ask if you can pray for them. It's this little step to turn their situation to God. If they say, you know, I'm not really comfortable with you praying here or wherever you are, respect them. Don't override them. Let them know that you're going to keep that concern of theirs in your prayers and then be a good friend by circling back later, checking in on them, and finding out how it's going. That's big. Let's go to idea number two. And remember, these are just my ideas. You might have better ones, and I'd love to hear some of those later. Idea number two is invite someone over to your house for dinner or for a hangout. Remember, we value uh, relational discipleship. So connecting with this person is a really good idea. And I want you to enjoy the person. I don't want you to come off like a used car salesman who's got to make a pitch at some point in the night or they're going to lose their job. That's not the, the vibe we want. Let the Spirit guide you. 
The reason I like relational evangelism is because it's normal as friendships grow for you to talk about all kinds of personal things with each other. When you start out a friendship, you're going to learn all kinds of new things about your new friend and vice versa. What are their favorite foods? What are their favorite hobbies? What's going on with their kids or their grandkids? You're going to probably find out relatively quickly where they stand on politics because that's something a lot of people bring up right away. Spiritual conversations can just be a natural part of friendship development. Inside a growing friendship, all of the questions that Kyle gave us last week in his teaching become much, much easier to ask. A tradition started at my house. When we're not in a crazy busy season, we like to have people over for dinner. And after dinner, we'll sit in our living room and we will play the question game. The question game is just I randomly ask questions for everyone to answer. They're often geared to be interesting or fun. I'm pulling these questions off of the internet under icebreaker questions. Okay. Um, once we get everyone loosened up and, and feeling comfortable, I might ask a deeper question or two to try to take the conversation to a deeper level. During one of these games, I could ask one of Kyle's questions that he gave us last week. I think everyone thinks, well, you're just supposed to bring someone to church. That's all you need to do. I think having your neighbor or your friend or whoever it is over to your house to be a part of your life, I think that's the best strategy. Okay. Idea number three that I have for you. As you're thinking of what you're going to do this week for your step of faith, you can always invite someone to church or a church event. You might be like, wait, I thought you just said the best thing to do is to have them to your house. Yes, I do think that is the best thing to do, but it doesn't mean that inviting someone to church or to a church event is bad. Easter Sunday is a holiday in most people's minds still today. And so just an invite to, to come with you to Easter services might not be that big of a deal. Um, if you invite someone to Easter services and they say, yes, I want to encourage you to have them over for lunch as well. If you're trying to reach a grandkid or a niece or a nephew, take them out to lunch after, after you drag them to church with you. Make that fun. And that also gives you uh, more opportunity to have conversation and even bring Jesus into the conversation. You can ask things like, did you enjoy the service today? What did you think about the illustration that the pastor shared? And then fill in the blank. We're hosting a marriage comedy date night the first Friday right after Easter. And we're doing that because we want to bless your marriage. But we also want to give you an opportunity to reach someone who might not follow you to a church service, but who would be willing to go with you to a comedy show. It could be a good first step for people. Take advantage of the fun outreach events that we like to sprinkle throughout the year. Maybe make it your personal goal that every time you go to one of these outreach events that we do, that you make sure you bring someone from your oikos with you. These are just some of my some of my ideas, and you might really just directly get after it. And you might be going into this week of challenge, and you might say, you know, I'm just going to share my testimony with my friend. I think the, the foundation is laid. I'm just going to let him know what Jesus has done for me. Or maybe you're like, you know what, I've, I've known this person for a while. I, I'm going to bring up Jesus. I'm going to go after some of the questions Kyle shared. I'm, I'm going to go for it this week. Do it. That sounds absolutely amazing. I would love for you guys to do two things. Number one, I would love your ideas. So if you've got a really great idea to, to start bridging that, that gap, to be more relationally evangelistic, I'd love to hear those. But number two, I'd really like you to do something this week. I'd really like you to take a step. Try to find a way to respond to the challenges we're giving you. We're not just talking about this for fun. We're not just studying all of this because we want some information. We're talking about this because the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. As I close, I want to hit on three things. Number one, do not underestimate the power of listening. The most important ministry tools that I have are these, my ears. The most important ministry tool that you have are your ears. Not once this month did, did any of the teachings say, hey, you need to preach a sermon. 
Not once. We have given you lots of different questions that you can ask to start a conversation. And once you get that conversation going, you got to use these. You got to use your ears. That's number one. Listen. Number two, I want you to avoid self-sabotage. Don't take yourself out before you even get started. What do I mean by this? When I was a kid, my dad would take me fishing and we would go to a local lake. We would run out on this long metal dock. Often it was metal. We would put a night crawler on a hook. We'd attach a bobber. We would throw that thing about six to eight feet away from where we were standing. And we would have a great old time patiently waiting for hopefully a fish to come. There were times where maybe I left watching the bobber and I went and played in the park or I ran to the bathroom or I was messing around or something and then I was ready to come back fishing and this happened so many times. It was almost like the most normal thing of a fishing trip. I'd be excited and I'd be running really fast and my feet would just go bang, 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 bang on the dock as I ran to where my dad was and he would holler at me, stop, don't run on the dock, don't be stomping around on the dock because all of that noise is going to scare all the fish away. The fish are coming near the dock to feed, and they hear all this banging around. They're not going to be in the mood to eat. As you prepare to take your steps of faith this week, don't stomp on the dock. And one specific way I want you to consider is leave your politics at home. It kills me that some people act like Winning people over to their politics is a holier calling than sharing the good news. If the person that you're trying to reach has different politics than you, then don't bring up politics. Avoid it at all costs. If someone tries to go political with me when I'm in a conversation with them, I'll say, yeah, that's why my hope isn't with any of these political leaders. Or I'll say, yeah, the problems down here really can't be solved by our government, can they? We need Jesus. Don't sacrifice your witness over politics. Satan loves to trip us up and to create walls and barriers and division when we're trying to build a bridge. Last but not least, be patient. I do believe the biggest sin here would be to keep our mouths shut and to live our whole lives and never share the good news. That would, that would be terrible. The whole goal of this entire month is to help us get off the bench and into the game. But I want to remind you that people aren't machines. You can't make a person do anything. We should know this by now. God is the only one who can change a heart. This week I, I read about a tragedy that one of my friends has gone through, and she felt like uh, at one point in her ministry to one of her uh, loved ones, she felt like she was hitting them over the head with the Bible. And she was doing that because she was so afraid that they weren't saved. And so in her zeal to make sure that they were saved and spending eternity in heaven, she came on a little too strong and she was kind of beating them over there with the Bible. And then this person tragically died. And so she's reflecting on this. And she realized that while she was trying to communicate the good news about the gospel, she did it in a way where she wasn't communicating how much she cared. And so it, it, it wasn't super successful. Which reminded me of something one of my key mentors taught me. It's a really important line, which is, people don't care about what you know until they know you care. People don't care about what you know unless they know you care. So keep that in mind. Pray. Seek some counsel. Get some advice. Before you go out, get your D group praying for you. Have your journey group be praying for you this week. Take some baby steps. If the Lord opens the door, be ready. If the Lord says, well, well, just be patient and keep watering and keep praying and keep being ready for the next time God gives you an opportunity. You know, the goal is for this to become our lifestyle. And we'll get good at it the more we practice it. The goal is for this to become just who we are and what we do. And it's not for it to just be this new and novel thing that we're trying but we all got to start somewhere. I want you to know that I am praying for you this week, and please let me know how things go. We are going to have an in-person upper room gathering very soon so we can encourage one another. Let's go get them.